Hi, I'm David Plazas. I'm the Opinion and Engagement Director for the Tennessean. This is a series of videos we're doing for, with candidates for mayor, and today we have Matt Wilshire, candidate for mayor. Thank you so much, Matt, for being here with us today. So for the public, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're running. Well, thanks, David. Thanks for doing this series. Thanks for the reporting that you do on Nashville. Um, so my name is Matt Wilshire. Uh, I am a Nashville native, born and raised here and um, graduated from Metro Nashville Public Schools. My kids have each attended Metro Nashville Public Schools, except for the youngest, who's only five, but will start kindergarten at MMPS in August. Uh, and um, I feel like I have taken on some big challenges in this city before. Um, did that during my time with the Mayor's Office of an Economic and Community Development. Started at a time when the unemployment rate was over 8% and helped bring that down to 2%. Um, and then went to work on affordable housing. So um, as a Nashville native who was born and raised here, I think that I bring the perspective of how to help our growing and changing city hold on to what makes Nashville special in the first place. What are two or three things in your vision that you will present to the public? Yeah, I think there are three things that we have to get right here. First is public education. As I mentioned, I'm a graduate of Metro Nashville Public Schools. My kids have been there. I've been working uh, with the public school system and as a student and as a parent for a long time. Public education is vitally important so that every child in this city has an equal opportunity to fulfill his or her dreams and hopes. Second thing is public safety. Um, we absolutely need to have a safer city with safer streets. And third is quality of life. Uh, that involves a number of things, but they're really all connected to each other. So it's having a city that we can afford to live in, that our kids want to move back to, that our grandkids can afford to live in. It's about having a city that we can get around with transit, transportation, mobility. It's about a city that has open space. We're growing and changing and developing. There need to be places where we can go out, experience the outside, be connected and get around. And so public education, public safety, and quality of life. The 2022 Vanderbilt polls show that most Nashvilleians don't think the city is headed in the right direction. What do you think about that and how do you turn that around? Yeah. So as you know, David, I've gotten into this race last summer. Um, there have been a number of other folks who jumped in more recently, uh, but I saw that big challenge for our city, and that's why I stepped up six months ago to get into this race. I think there is a feeling of disconnectedness in the city. I think there's a feeling that Nashville's changing and it's happening to us instead of us making Nashville benefit the people who actually live here. I think that's the most important thing. When I go around talking to people around the county, that's what I hear from them. And I think there's a lot that we can do to have this growth and development and change actually benefit the people who live here as opposed to happening to us. One of the things that you've said in your commercials, you've talked about the institutions that are no longer with us. Tell us a little bit about that. You know, what does it feel as a native Nashvillean, what does it feel like not to have a place like Rotiers or Arnold's or yeah. how, how does that city mesh with the, the incredible growth that has happened in, in recent years? Yeah, I mean, I, you, you mentioned Arnold. That was a, a really fun experience. Uh, the family was nice enough to invite me to come down and, and help them serve the public on one of their last days. Actually, it was down there on, on the Thursday before they closed on Saturday. And I think they just thought it'd be a, a nice thing to do for an hour. Uh, but uh, two hours in, they were like, hey, you're doing a great job. Can you come back tomorrow? Uh, and I actually had a lunch scheduled the next day, but I postponed that lunch and then came back on Friday and served again on Friday. Um, and it was such an honor for me to get to stand side by side with them. And it was, you know, it was a wonderful thing to get to serve Nashvilleans who were coming in to experience that institution in our city for the last time. And, and the growth and change is really overwhelming for our city. It is really important that we hold on to those those things that make Nashville special in the first place. And that's one example, but there are others across the city. Some places that I made, I had breakfast this morning at Fido. Um, I used to go shop for pets there when it was Jones's Pet Store. Uh, and so, look, the, the growth and the change is going to happen. And, and uh, I think Fido is great. Uh, Bob Bernstein's done a wonderful job at that place and others around the city. Uh, but, but it is really important that we hold on to the heart and essential of what makes Nashville special. You know, to that point, there has have been historically tension between Nashville natives, between newcomers, and between visitors. How do you help create a city that is equitable to all of those different people? Yeah. It's about investing in our priorities. We're talking about this with public education, and at times it feels like there's two Nashvilles, the haves and the have-nots, and I think it's about investing 
Again, so that every neighborhood feels like one that you would want to live in, where you feel safe, where the schools are helping to teach your kids well. It's about investing, and our budget should reflect our priorities, and that would be my priority as mayor. I think it's making sure that all parts of this county, from Bellevue to Bordeaux, Jolton to Antioch, to Old Hickory to Madison to Donaldson, all of the parts of this county feel like that they are thriving neighborhoods, and there's been so much um, uh, underinvestment in, in folks for, for far too long. I think that's what's created some of this disconnect. So tell us about uh, the Titan Stadium. This has been big in the news, of course, and it looks like we're headed to possibly a, a, a new stadium, but what are your thoughts about that and, and thoughts about how that development around there goes forward? Yeah, so I believe two things about the Titan Stadium. First is, your word is your bond. And we have a promise and a commitment to the Titans. It was signed in 1996. Your word is your bond. Second, I believe that the proposed funding model on Titan Stadium, a $500 million grant from our partners at the state, and an increase in the hotel occupancy tax um, to pay for the, that public piece of the investment, is a much better funding model than putting it on the backs of taxpayers through property taxes. So I am supportive of the proposed funding model um, to go forward. I think that relieves taxpayers of a tremendous burden. And you mentioned multiple neighborhoods like Bellevue and Bells Bend and so forth. And you have, how do you balance that need to invest in downtown in that area and also invest in those neighborhoods? You know, an example, I was just going up Bordeaux recently for a conference and that construction has just been very disruptive. Sure. And uh, whereas you see some other perhaps faster construction when it comes to the downtown area. Yeah. I think that investment of, of Clarksville Highway um, can bring great investment, and I'm optimistic. I've met with a number of folks um, in the Bordeaux area, and I'm optimistic about that part of town, seeing some investments like have happened in some other places, but led by the community. Again, this idea that development doesn't happen to us, but by us, and I think that's really important in that neighborhood and in all neighborhoods. As it relates to the East Bank, there is a ton of investor interest in Nashville right now. That fire has been lit, and I think a project as big as the East Bank is going to take a long time to develop. The priorities that I will be focused on, on mayor, as mayor, are on investing in existing neighborhoods around town where folks are living today rather than spending hundreds of millions of dollars to build an entirely new neighborhood. I think that development will happen. We need to be thoughtful about it, but we need to invest first in the folks who are already here and have made Nashville special in the first place. So the state of Tennessee, the Tennessee legislature in particular, and metro government are right now at, uh, at this moment. How do we fix that? I, I think the, the breakdown between the state and the city is an absolute disaster and a travesty. I mean, folks fighting, politi making political points and punching back and forth um, is not good for the city, and it's not good for the state. I think we are all one together, and we ought to be in this together. I think it really first starts with just building relationships by sitting down, having conversations. You all have been a chief proponent of civil discourse. We need to sit down in conversation, not just with the people who agree with us, but in particular with the people who may see things a little bit differently. That's something that I have done. I've got a proven track record of that over my career and I will continue to do. It's the first thing that I will do as mayor is sit down and build relationships, listen more than I talk and begin to try and repair some things that have gotten really off track over the last several years. Before I ask you some final fun questions, tell us again a little bit about you. But these haven't been these have been the fun. These are fun, <laughs> fun questions. for me. They're, They're fun, fun for me. For me. But like, I love this stuff. Getting to like talk about the big challenges facing our city and talk about how we can all address them together, like that is really fun. No, it, it, actually, you make a good point of that. So yeah. You make a persuasive case. Uh, l let me ask you a little bit about um, just your own background. You know, yeah. we, we should have started a little bit there. Tell the public a little bit about what you've done in the past and, uh, and, and what has led you to this journey. Sure, thank you. Yeah, so my story, I referenced it a little bit at the top, but born and raised in Nashville. Uh, my parents, Susan and Ashley, my mom was a professor at Fisk and then at Vanderbilt. My father, Ashley, um, was the executive director of the Legal Aid Society for 35 years, the public defender, but for civil cases. And I'll plug his book. He's just written a book about that experience. So Everyday Justice, pick it up at your local bookstore. 
Uh, but they really instilled in my sister Carrie and me this idea of being engaged in neighborhoods and in community. They actually helped start the very first neighborhood association in Nashville. Um, and so uh, after graduating from Metro Nashville Public Schools, uh, graduating from Hume Fogg at a time when Lower Broad looked very different from how it does today, uh, I went away for college and then worked in the private sector for 15 years. A couple years in San Francisco, six or seven years in New York, and then moved back home to Nashville. And here for six or seven years during that time, um, became very engaged in a variety of nonprofits and community organizations around town. I was actually the president of the board of Hands On Nashville during the May 2010 floods. You remember how devastating those were, of course. Um, but inspired by that public-private nonprofit partnership response, about a year after those floods, I joined the mayor's office as the director of mayors of the mayor's office of economic and community development, where I served for eight years under three different mayors. Um, and during that time, again, faced big challenges, high unemployment, folks struggling, families having a tough time putting food on the table, uh, brought the unemployment rate way down. But new challenges emerged. And uh, in this case, I saw affordable housing and the lack of attainable and affordable housing as the next big challenge our city was facing. And so I moved over to MDHA. Um, we launched a very ambitious affordable housing plan and I moved volunteered to move over to MDHA to help implement the staff plan. And I was there for three years. We made some great progress. There's still a long way to go, but we made some really great progress. Um, and then, again, saw big challenges that the city was facing and offered myself up to serve. So thank you very much for that. As we conclude this, uh, this conversation, I always like to ask people, especially those who've lived in the city a long time, because I get visitors all the time yeah. here who ask me, where do I go? Two to three places that you recommend to visitors if they have a short time to spend in Nashville. Yeah. Uh, well, the first one would be Sweats, uh, not just because David Sweat is a good friend of mine, uh, but it is one of those Nashville institutions that's been around here and is connected to the past and still great food today. Um, so I'd say Sweats would be one. Uh, I mentioned Fido earlier, go to a local coffee shop. I don't want to just uh, identify those. There are a bunch of them across the county that I've had a chance to go visit, but go out to Donaldson, go out to, to Madison, you know, Lower Broad, lots of folks check that out, and that's great. It's a great entertainment. The tourism is wonderful for Nashville. That's a quintessential Nashville experience, and you should absolutely go to the Honky Tonks downtown if you're a visitor and enjoy and experience that. They're a great thing, and it's a wonderful thing that folks want to come to our city for that. Uh, but while you're here enjoying that, stop in a local spot that's maybe not seen as much. Well, thank you very much to Matt Wilshire. Thank you to our viewership. Uh, remember to follow us on Tennessean.com for more news and updates about the mayor's race. And please subscribe if you're not, if you're not already subscribed to us. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank That's you. success to you. Right. Thank you, Dave.